untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello everyone and welcome to the first day of Praetor Week where we'll be building decks around the various Phyrexian Praetors and first up is Elish Norn in Historic Brawl. The 7 mana 4-7 has a Vigilance, says other creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 whereas creatures your opponents control get minus 2 minus 2. So a very impactful card the turn we play it can often win the game on the spot if we build our deck around it especially with lots of tokens which is the direction I've gone in here and you can see most of the token generation at the top of your screen, including a Clarion Spirit at 2 mana which can make additional 1-1 Flying Spirit tokens if we cast a second spell. The Militia Captain can transform into Cult Leader, making additional 1-1s each turn if we have enough creatures to enable it in the first place. Then the Horn of Valhalla, an equipment that can be adventured first to make X 1-1 tokens and then can also boost up our creatures afterwards. We've got a Raise the Alarm, a 2 mana instant, making two 1 ones. The Reinforcements is a creature that's basically the same as the Raise the Alarm otherwise. And then Birth can make an 0 4 wall token, help us hit our land drops by finding a planes. And then Finale of Glory can be an awesome finisher, especially if X equals 10 or more, in which case we make 4 4 Flying Angel tokens with Vigilance, as opposed to the 2 2 Soldiers with Vigilance. And then we've got a Blade Splicer making a 3-3 Golem, which will have first strike for as long as we control Blade Splicer. The Attendant makes a Wizard token that can help us counter non-creature spells. Restoration can also help hit our land drops, eventually transforming into Architect. Then Wedding Announcement, of course, very powerful as we know from Standard, making 1-1 tokens, eventually transforming into the Wedding Festivity. There's Adlin, also very powerful, making additional 1-1 humans. We've got History to make some 2-2 Knights with Vigilance, eventually giving our Knights plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. Skyclave Apparition, just good removal. And then at 4 mana, there's Anointed Procession to double the amount of tokens we generate. Release the dogs will make 4 1 1 dog tokens for 4 mana, so that's a pretty efficient rate. Then Battle Screech we can cast and often flash back in the same turn, making a whole bunch of flying birds. There's Elspeth that can also make a pair of 1 1 tokens with a minus 2, potentially pump up our creatures with a minus 1. Stram's Expertise allows us to cast another cheap spell alongside it for free, so that can also potentially give us a very explosive turn. There's Starnheim Unleashed, which can be foretold and then cast later to make a whole bunch of angel tokens. And then the Wandering Emperor gives us some much needed removal and can also make 2-2 Samurai tokens with Vigilance. Then at 5 mana there's a Divine Visitation to turn all our tokens into 4-4 angels with Vigilance. We've got a Reverend Hoplite, making 1-1 one, one tokens equal to our devotion to white, so the more white mana symbols in play, the better. And then Rabble Rousing can also make a ton of extra citizen tokens, potentially enabling Hideaway to cast a spell for free. And then at 6 mana, there's Archon, which will upgrade all our tokens into 3-3s, three as well as making 2 when it enters a battlefield. Sanctuary Warden can draw extra cards and make citizens. And then the Intervention can make a pair of knights in addition to a lot of other stuff. And Emirius Call can be played as a land, or can make 2 4-4 four, four Angel Warriors. And then our mana base also has Castle Ardenvale as a good mana sink to make additional 1-1s. One -ones. Then continuing on, we've got a bit of spot removal with the Humiliation, which can also remove abilities, deal damage equal to the number of creatures we control. Source to Plowshares, of course, a staple in any white deck. Conclave Tribunal we can often cast for free if we manage to use Convoke and just tap a few creatures instead. Then there's March as another flexible removal spell. And then we continue with lots of ramp cards, of course. If we ever want to get to 7 mana, we're going to need a bit of acceleration. At 2 mana, there's Signet, Heart, Idol, Mindstone, and Ornithopter. Then at 3 mana, there's Lantern. Banner is also very nice, giving our creatures one additional power. Mana Geode to Scry. Relic can later be sacrificed. Mirror makes 2 mana. Relic can be kicked to make additional copies of itself. Celesta is always nice for a bit of card selection. And Obelisk can also be used as removal. And then the more expensive ramp options include a Firemind Vessel, Hedron Archive, and Key to the Archive, which can all make 2 mana. There's Solemn, which can find an extra land and draw a card when it dies. Gilded Lotus at 5. And then the Dreamstone can also make 3 mana. And then we've got some additional card draw engines with Asper Sentinel to punish the opponent for casting non-creature spells. Treasure Map can help us scry, can also eventually ramp us by making a bunch of treasure tokens, and we can turn those treasures into extra cards with a treasure cove. 
And then Mentor of the Meek and Welcoming Vampire will help us draw additional cards when small creatures enter the battlefield. And finally, the Mortal Sun will also draw an extra card each turn, give us a 1 mana discount on all our spells, and we don't have many Planeswalkers, so shutting them all down is mostly an advantage, and will also give our team plus 1 plus 1. And then we've got Angel of Invention, which also belongs in the token category with Fabricate, making 2 1 1 servo tokens when it enters most of the time, giving our team plus 1 plus 1. We've got Cathar's Crusade, a great payoff for making lots of tokens as we'll be able to put a ton of plus one counters on the team. And finally, Overwhelming Splendor, also a great combo with Elish Norn, as we now get to shrink down all the opponent's creatures into 1-1s one -ones with no abilities, and then Elish Norn can easily finish them off, giving them a minus two, minus two. And then our mana base has a few more goodies with a few creature lands. There's Cave, as well as Crawling Barons. We've got Iganjo, which can be channeled as removal. Shafat Junes can also pump the team, can be a useful finisher if we don't have Elish Norn out. And then some additional card draw with Arch, which can easily reach the city's blessing by making some tokens. The Reliquary can also draw as we have both artifacts and enchantments. And then we've got uh, Labyrinth, which can also shut a creature down. Inventor's Fair can maybe reach three artifacts to start gaining more life and can eventually maybe tutor up something like an Immortal Sun. And then a uh, Blast Zone, additional removal as well. So yeah, that's our Mono White Elish Norn tokens. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ginny Fey, potentially a tokens deck, which bodes well for our commander. This hand could use an extra land, but once we do, we should be fine. Between Mirror and Restoration, we can ramp quite nicely. So we'll see if our opponent is indeed focusing on token synergies, and turn one garden certainly points that way. Okay, so really need a third land here, so we can be off to the races. Grandquist Command makes two goblins. And I guess we'll play a Clarion Spirit for now. And join the dance makes more one ones. And still nothing. So if our opponent has an Anthem effect here, we could be in serious trouble. And yeah, Intangible Virtue pumping all tokens. And a Sanctuary to protect them. I think I'm gonna have to trade off here as much as I wanna preserve my creatures. Okay, so third land, I think we go for Mirror since it also blocks the plant token. Opponent doesn't seem like a deck with too much removal. Toski is a good one too. Happy to block the plants. At least we can still kill Toski with Elish Norn eventually. And then now with the mirror we can maybe double spell. We could go banner plus restoration. Could even play Archon, although it will pump the opponent's tokens, which Probably we want to avoid when we want to just ramp into Elish Nord instead. So yeah, we have options. If I go Banner, I could also play Release the Dogs, and then next turn I should still be on track to play Elish Nord. So I'll give that a shot. Don't really want to block their tokens, but preventing them from drawing might be worth it. Opponent plays Ginny. Two mana left. And all attack. Yeah, I think we preserve our board presence to go off with Elish Norn. Even if our opponent does have removal, like a sword to plowshares, we'll still wipe the opponent's board, basically. And if they don't have removal, we get a massive attack in which will swing the race in our favor. I guess the main concern would have been removal on Mirror, so we wouldn't have been able to cast Elish Norn in the first place. Let's see if they have a sword. They don't. Putting falls to nine. So yeah, despite missing several land drops early, Elish Norn stabilizing us very nicely. 
Let's see how our opponent manages to recover. Showdown. That's uh, most of their turn gone. And yeah, Jatmir are very powerful once you already have a board presence, but it's not going to help them too much here. And then we can even play Archon to pump our token some more. And a migration can make a couple cats. Alright, let's play Archon. Smash. Did shrink down our Elish Norn, but opponents won't be able to double block it and our opponent explodes. Who let the dogs out indeed? On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Raga Draga, and I do like two lands, Idol and Swords. The rest of my hand a little bit on the pricey side, so we'll need to draw into more ramp, and probably won't have time to cast all of these in time, so this is a painful mulligan. This is a bit better. Even though our opponent's mostly going to be playing creatures, so don't expect Sentinel to do a whole lot. Turn two treasure map, turn three we can play banner and still activate the map. Opponent did start out with a ley line, so their creatures will make more mana. And then still liking banner before her relic. Cultivate for more ramp. Opponent can easily pay the one. And the land is good. Still liking Banner, which will also pump the Sentinel's power to make it more effective. And then we want to scry into more lands, basically. Put an upkeep stop just in case we want to scry an upkeep. Visionary draws. And then at some point we can march as well. Not sure if we want to deal with the Raga Draga, which they can easily replay. Might be better off dealing with actual creatures. Bottom birth, I think, even though it finds a land. Might still be worth it. Sure. So play this. Play a planes for a turn. And then I could see the advantage of just using March now on the druid. Or I could play a Skyclave Relic and then still scry with map and give them more time to develop their board. Close call. Could also try and set up a situation where we do march Raga Draga and then Elish Norn finishes off a bunch of mana creatures. So I guess we'll go with a Relic plan for now. And then transforming treasure map will also give us a small mana boost. But in case of emergency, we could still march. Well, Galta is certainly scary. Doesn't have haste yet. Now, luckily, because Galta got a discount, it didn't trigger Raga Draga's last ability. Escape. Opponent can pay two if they want. And uh, Foreign Clex is going to be hard to beat. So we've got our work cut out for us. Raga Draga hits us for four. And we'll scry. And I think a land is fine. Okay. Make a wall. And we could play Ilishnorn here if we want. Although they can also kill it with Intervention. They might even have enough mana to play Vorinclex and Intervention with all the extra mana elves here. If I play Elish Norn, I'll be pretty much tapped out. If I instead use Treasure Map, I can get a small mana boost to maybe use March to exile Raga Draga and then Elish Norn deals with the Visionary at least. Maybe that's the move here. Sure. Then I don't think we need more lands afterwards. Okay, 
and then probably need to march now. Or we can do it in the opponent's upkeep, I suppose. In case they have a protection spell in hand. Since they won't be able to use the mana, they float in any useful manner. I guess they could activate Leyline. Alright, so there's still reasons to march now. And then X equals 4. Pitching two cards, sadly giving away the horn, which would have been pretty nice here with Elishnorn. Alright, and now the visionary dies. And hopefully Vorinclex wouldn't be quite as impactful now that we already cast our expensive creature. Well, it's gonna be an Ulamog instead. Exiling Ilish Norn plus something else. Well, the good news is that they weren't able to cast the cards in exile. Bad news is that we're probably dead here to Galta and to Ulamog. So yeah, an early ley line backed up by a few mana creatures. Got the job done. Probably no point in chumping the Trampler. Although we probably will have to next turn. Miria's Call I can actually cast. Also makes my creatures indestructible, so now they can chump without dying. Although we're still incredibly far behind. <laughs> and the Crater Hoof Behemoth. Well, sometimes you just have it all. So I don't think we can survive. Pona's got... 39 points of trample. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we're missing some ramp, but um, we otherwise have decent synergy facing Lavinia. So, yeah, I think uh, this is fine. The fact that we're up against Lavinia also makes ramp less effective to an extent at least to ramp artifacts. So we can just play a fair game of curving Adlin into a mentor and drawing extra cards and eventually rabble rousing. Of course we can expect some counter spells along the way. Don't think I'll be casting Emeria's Call so I'll play it out now. Opponent doing the same with an authority. Fair enough. So sure. Land pass. And then turn three, the play is probably Adlin. And then next turn I can still play Mentor and pay the one of the token we get, hopefully. Welcoming Vampire, also very similar. So we've got some nice card draw going in our favor. Elite Spellbinder, gonna have a look. But uh, between Vampire and Mentor, we have quite a bit of redundancy, so it takes a Rabble Rousing, makes sense. And then to be mana efficient, I guess Mentor pay the one. Makes sense. And then maybe next turn I can play Reinforcements and draw multiple cards with Mentor, whereas Vampire has a limit of how many cards you can draw with it. Although it could be mitigated somewhat by playing reinforcements in the opponent's turn. Opponent takes a trade and Shatter the Sky will clear the board. Makes sense. Alright, so Mana Geode plus Militia Captain could work. And then next turn we can still go Welcoming Vampire plus reinforcements. Procession seems fun. Although we should maybe dig towards more lands to cast Immortal Sun and eventually Rabble Rousing. Blast Zone luckily cannot deal with tokens. And a Nico. Fair enough. Makes a shard token and Eidolon of Obstruction. So opponent definitely leaning into the prison elements. 
Nico kills our militia captain. But we can now play Mortal Sun, which will also shut down their Planeswalker. So that seems worthwhile. And then Vampire will still draw, even if we make some 2-2 soldiers. Take two. And start drawing extra cards. And that's how we pull ahead. Okay. So, try Vampire. And then we can reinforcements in the opponent's turn as well, or we can do it now. Since we might be able to draw another token maker, although it's unlikely to be an instant speed one. So to play around a sweeper, maybe still better to keep the reinforcements in hand. Opponent draws with a token. So they're not planning to level a blast soon. Still probably going to kill Nico if I get the chance. Alright, opponent does take a blast zone by one. In case they answer Immortal Sun, I don't want Nico to start activating again. Could try and flash in reinforcements here in case we find something we want to cast. Although I guess the tokens do come into play tapped, so we won't be able to double block the Eidolon to ambush it. Okay, so we get to draw. And then now Rabble Rousing looks pretty good. See if there's a response. Dovin's Veto. Okay. I think I still like activating Guardian Idol here. And then we'll take out Nico and uh, attack their face for a bunch. They could still blow a Blast Zone. Alright, they're just going to add a counter to it. In that case, do it like this. Opponent's still not running out Lavinia. And now we have a ton of options with our mana base as well, although probably going to start by playing Ornithopter to draw. And yeah, opponent concedes, just uh, too far behind with the Immortal Sun drawing us two cards per turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Fire Song and Sunspeaker, so a red-white life gain deck. My hand is mm, pretty medium. Opponent's probably going to have a couple sweepers, so I don't want token makers early. The ramp is nice, but uh, only one of them, so let's try free Mulligan, and this is much better. Turn to Mindstone into a key to the archive. And then we'll have plenty of mana to eventually draw cards with Mentor. Opponent's got their own Mindstone. Could also play a Vessel on the off chance her opponent has artifact removal here. And wait on key for an extra turn. Speaker of the Heavens makes sense. And a Tajik. Okay. Will hit us for three. Although it still dies to Ilishnorn. So we'll just keep on ramping, I think. And I can play Relic into Key. And then Day of Judgment could actually be quite effective too. What to get rid of is a question. Rabble Rousing could be fun with Mentor. Although Mentor's going to be pretty weak once we have an Elish Norn in play. So maybe I just ditch the Mentor after all. There's also an argument for getting rid of Rabble Rousing since we don't have any way to kind of kickstart it. But once we get it going with Visitation, it's going to take over very quickly. Scroll Wielder to get back instants and sorceries. But yeah, this uh, Day of Judgment gets around Tajik's ability, although playing Elishnorn also an option, although it would not deal with a scroll wielder. That's just Day of Judgment, and then I can still play one of my enchantments. And then Visitation probably makes the most sense for now. Okay, 
pretty close to the city's blessing, at which point we can sacrifice a relic to draw a card. Opponent revitalizing. Alright, so play captain, get the city's blessing, and then Arch could also start drawing if we want, since Rabble Rousing doesn't really do anything at the moment. Opponent kills captain, that happens. And we'll just pass it back. Probably hang on to the relic now that we have the arch as a mana sink. Fire Song resolves, can do some fun things with life gain. Okay, so not really compelled to play Elish Norn as it doesn't have an immediate impact when it enters. So we might just want to keep drawing with Arch. Can introduce the day and night cycle as well. Alright, there we go. So now we have a great payoff. Next turn, just make a million tokens. And then uh, both Rabble Rousing and Elishnorn are going to be pretty fun alongside those, although just a visitation turning all our 1-1s into 4-4s is good enough. Although Fire Emancipation could potentially kill us here, tripling the damage of Fire Songs. So if there's a burn spell, we're just dead. Okay, well, let's just uh, go for the call and then maybe want to leave Relic untapped to gain three, maybe start there, or I can do it in response of a burn spell. So x equals a nine. There we go, nine angels. So now we can block fire song. Opponent with an intervention to the face. So I can gain three, sadly not enough here to survive, as our opponent can deal nine damage with the burn spell. Oh, that's too bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems reasonable enough, even though we're missing a ramp against the first sliver. I guess it's not bad to have a bit of interaction to maybe deal with early ramp cards or slivers. So I guess we'll try it. And our deck does have a lot of ramp artifacts we can draw eventually. Okay, Battle Screech also quite nice. Can easily flash it back the same turn we play it. And a mana weft is worth taking out. And between Apparition and March. I guess Apparition makes the most sense, adds a creature to the board. And then ideally draw land so we can just play one of our four drops. I rally the ranks naming Sliver. Okay, and a Guardian Idol I guess is acceptable, although probably better off playing Lantern. So finding a few ramp artifacts is nice, although if we're also missing our land drops, it's a bit counterproductive. Tempered Sliver is fine. 3-3 three, three, thanks to Rally. Okay. So now if I were to play Guardian Idol, I could top deck a land and cast Elishnor next turn. Or I can just uh, Battle Screech flashback Battle Screech. I guess we'll give ourselves the chance of playing Elishnorn next turn. 
and then pass for now. Could also march at any point. Maybe exiling the rally is worth it. Smothering Tithe also quite annoying. We'll help them cast the uh, first sliver. Although I'm kind of liking exiling rally. So Elishnord can instantly kill Tempered Sliver. Hoplites. Okay, so do we pay the two? I guess we do, since we're just going to play a 4-drop here. Battle Screech, flashback Battle Screech. And then Skyclave can attack. Don't think they'll be trading. Alright, Bonin does. So now if we draw lands, we'll give them the treasure, play Elishnorn, which is going to be very impactful. Inscription will empty out our hand. Fair enough. Mage's Attendant means we can pay. And uh, attack with our birds. And then we're also leaving up mana to pay the one for the wizard token to maybe counter a sweeper. Although I don't necessarily think our opponent's playing those. Alright, time for the first sliver. Cascades into Arcane Signet. They can have that one. Even though I could have countered it with a wizard before Mox Amber made any mana. Now a two mana sliver for Curious Obsession. That's fine. And we'll just trade for Attendant. Alright, so once again, pay the two. But now with Palladium Mirror, we'll be able to play Elishnor next turn. Assuming no shenanigans. And that should just kill the opponent on the spot, most likely. But we'll see what the first sliver can come up with. A Leeching Sliver cascades into... Set of swords. Yep. All right. Palladium mirror might be answered here. So then we still need to draw lanes. Do I make them pay the one? Opponent has a lot of mana. I don't think we do. Two cards in hand. Can also sacrifice Shafet Junes to pump our team. Doesn't quite give us lethal. Opponent passes, anointed procession the draw. Okay, so I guess we'll pay. And then attack with the birds. Can play procession. Or we can keep up the wizard's ability. Could also activate lantern. Which can also help us find a land for Elishnorn. So maybe that's just a better play here. Can activate his at instant speed. So I'll just pass. And then if we need to use the wizard, we can. If not, use lantern, which most likely gives us access to Illusionor next turn. Predatory finds striking sliver, I believe. To give the team first strike. Okay. No zero mana card. And then once Illusionor kills predatory sliver, the rest will follow. Unearthing Tempered Sliver. And all out attack. So now I'm pretty sure we can also just kill the opponent with Shafat Dunes. Uh, how much damage are we taking? This is 16. Might still be safer to chump first sliver. Opponent gets some plus one counters. And then activate Lantern. And then do we put that on the bottom? I guess we do, since it doesn't actually cast Elishnorn. And still no lands. Well, kind of a 
weird game, but uh, now I think we just go for Shafet Dunes. So decline, activate, and smash. And just the birds attacking. Alright, and we got there, so a bit of an anticlimactic game, never getting to cast our 7-drop, but the birds got it done. Okay, we're on the play, facing Minsk and Boo, a red-green aggro, and we've got a keepable hand, I think. Sram's expertise will make plenty of tokens to enable humiliation. Bit of ramp with a lantern. And then Immortal Sun shuts down the opponent's Planeswalker as well. It's going to be a Burning Tree and no follow-up. Can play Adeline now if we'd like. Yeah, that makes sense. And then next turn I can Expertise plus Lantern. If Burning Tree attacks, I'll probably take it. It's gonna be a Faceless Agent. I'm wondering what uh, creature type it's gonna be, probably just human. And a Wedding Announcement, also very nice with uh, Sram's Expertise. Although if I put in Lantern, there's a chance I can play Mortal Sun next turn, which is probably the highest upside. And then I could still cast Humiliation 2 if I'd like. So we can maybe blow up a double block, which may be worth it. Okay. So a very efficient turn. And then if we don't draw land, we can still draw off Wedding Announcement, which gets us closer. And then Immortal Sun naturally curves into Elishnorn. Zero points on the back foot. They respond with a Lenore Visionary. That's fine. And play Mortal Sun. Team gets to attack, and if our opponent doesn't have an immediate answer here, I don't think they'll be able to recover. A Lightning Bolt, not good enough here. Killing a 2-2, opponent takes it, they get to untap, but uh, yeah, their commander doesn't do anything. Balor, I guess, could do something if it gets a chance to attack, but that's going to be too late. So we'll just jam Elishnorn, can play Celestus first if we'd like. And smash. All right, satisfying game here. Sram's expertise, essentially giving us eight mana worth of plays. On turn four, gave us a lot of momentum. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Sadistic Pilgrim, Black-White Sacrifice. This hand's missing ramp, and I think we're going to need it if we want to get up to Elishnorn in a timely manner, so... Take our free mulligan. This is a little bit better. At least have a Skyclave Relic. And I don't think I'll be casting Amirius Call. So hoping for as much ramp as possible to cast a big finale. Turn to Pilgrim. So for now, a pretty quiet start for us. Hoplite also not looking too exciting next turn. With almost no devotion. And a veto, yeah, that's quite scary too. Treasure map might be worth it here. And then we can curve Archon into Elishnorn. And then scry with a map for now. And 
At least Elishnorn can deal with a lot of the smaller creatures in the Pilgrim deck. Even the ones that uh, maybe leave behind a token when they die. Ranger Captain's not bad. We'll see what one drop they get. Most of the one drops are white in the uh, Pilgrim deck. But uh, Shambling Ghast, they can still play. Possible opponents afraid of a sweeper and they'll end up sacrificing Ranger Captain. We'll see. But for now we're taking another 3 damage. And an Angel of Invention is not terrible. Yeah, might be keeping that one. And then I could play Angel plus still Scry with a treasure map to help transform it. And our opponent is going to sack Ranger Captain, afraid of a sweeper. As it turns out, our deck's not really playing too many Wrath effects. Just relying on Elish Norn and then tokens. So that worked out for us. Play Angel. And then we'll make some servo tokens, even though our opponent's somewhat likely to be able to sacrifice Shambling Gas and kill Angel. I just want the extra board presence. And then now we're also building up our devotion for Hoplite. Falcon Wrath Noble will also drain us as creatures die, although it does perish to an Elish Norn at least. Shambling Gas attacks. I think we take the one. And yeah, next turn we should be able to play Elish Norn once we transform Treasure Map. Although if there's a land on top, I'll keep it. Mana Geode, we do not. So let's transform. Still looking for land here, ideally. So we don't have to waste as much treasure. Slam down Elish Norn. And then we'll have a 4-3 uh, Angel before they get a chance to give it minus one, minus one. Uh -huh, village rights in response. Okay, that can kill our Angel of Invention. So we don't get to gain that life back, which is quite precious at the moment since we're taking a lot of damage between Noble and Vito. but at least the board looks a bit cleaner now. So yeah, we could easily die next turn to just a bunch of random triggers. I think we just attack with one token. Opponent can also give Vito a lifelink here. Although at minus one power, it's not going to be incredibly effective. Although can expect them to answer Elish Norn. So yeah, losing that Angel of Invention to the Village Rites, definitely a big deal. Now a Bastion too. Makes a token that instantly dies, triggering Vito and Bastion. So we fall to two. And a Doom Dissenter will also kill us here. Alright, so opponent using Elish Norn as a sacrifice outlet here, basically. GG's on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems acceptable. Facing Lagomo, so a red-black sacrifice deck. Got a nice low curve. Turn to probably run out Clarion Spirit. And I'm okay if it dies. And then we can draw quite a few cards of Welcoming Vampire between Raise the Alarm and Battle Screech. As for Sentinel's nice too. Yeah, I think we still play Clarion Spirit, and then next turn going Celestus into Sentinel will trigger it.
for now take two of the elemental token. And yeah, we'll stick to the plan. Celestus into Sentinel. Lagomus might actually see five creatures die once we play Elishnorn if they have a wide enough board. For now, we'll take two. And the Woe Strider, a nice sacrifice outlet as well. So what's our plan for next turn? Ideally we find a land so we can double spell and trigger Welcoming Vampire, perfect. So we'll go Welcoming Vampire treasure map, which will trigger Clarion Spirits, make a 1-1 and draw with a Welcoming Vampire. And then I can keep the Raise the Alarm to maybe play in the opponent's turn. So we can draw with a Vampire once again. So that worked out nicely, probably fine to hit for one. Rampage will require a one mana payment. And then sacrifice probably the treasure map since I really need the extra mana. Everyone's got their own treasure map. Can block with Welcoming Vampire now at least. So your opponent's gonna scry before combat damage. Okay, so we're still Doing quite nicely here, drawing extra cards with our Welcoming Vampire, getting towards Elishnorn, and then now Adlin can attack with our Flyers, trigger Adlin, which will trigger Welcoming Vampire to draw. And then I'll play Raise the Alarm in the opponent's turn to draw again, as opposed to playing it now to get a Spirit Token. And then we just need to draw into an untapped land to be able to slam down Elishnorn, which will probably win the game on the spot if all goes according to plan. But we'll see if our opponent has something to say about it. Would be interesting if uh, they play enough tokens to activate Lagomo's second ability. But uh, even if they get to tutor up whatever they want here, it's probably not going to help if they lose their entire board and take a million. All right, Colleen makes a treasure. Lagomus triggers. And play Raise the Alarm. So opponent is keeping up mana to potentially answer Elishnorn, although it's still gonna wipe the opponent's board as soon as we play it. Now we have a different option as well, maybe play the long game with Cathar's Crusade. I uh, can't quite double spell Crusade with something else, and yeah, our opponent just concedes at the mere sight of 7 mana. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a nice one here facing Turgrid, God of Fright, a discard deck. But having early acceleration to quickly empty your hand is one of the best ways to fight a discard strategy. So our plan's probably going to be to make some tokens with Horn, and then play Rabble Rousing on the following turn. Turn 1 Pilfering Imp can have a look next turn. They might just go for the token cards, leaving me with Relic into Signet as a nice sequence. Alright, Waste Not first, so opponent setting up slowly. Celestus actually could be a drawback with Turgrid out, but I guess it's a May ability whether or not we discard. So we'll still go for Celestus plus uh, Signet here. Also have to watch out for waste knots, so plenty of reasons not to loot with the Celestis. So our opponent's gonna have a peek here. Arcane Signet first, that works. And then if I were them, probably take Horn. 
since Rabble Rousing doesn't do much by itself. Takes the Rousing instead. Possible they have a Sweeper. But I think I'm happy enough making what would be four tokens here. And then a tapped cave sets up Elishnorn next turn, which will be quite effective. Opponent can play Turgrid. Although now Sanctuary Warden is even better. Don't quite have the mana to play a Relic first, so we'll just play Sanctuary Warden. And play a land. Play Horn. Opponents likely will be able to steal a Relic here with Turgrid. That's okay. And then equipping Horn is a way to get past the 4-5, although playing Elishnorn will also pump up our team enough to attack past it. Just gotta watch out for instant speed removal. So Relic down. Opponent draws, steals Relic. But at this point we're in top deck mode, so opponent's unlikely to steal much else. Unless it comes through a sacrifice effect with Turgrid, which could still be the case. Banner's great. So if I play Banner, I wouldn't be able to play Elishnorn. But I think that's still okay. Could also equip Horn if we'd like. Or see what we draw off Sanctuary Warden if we decide to draw. Although don't mind keeping the extra counter on it for now. So yeah, can play Banner. Could also animate Cave instead of equipping Horn. Nah, I think I still like equipping a token here, which otherwise isn't doing much. And then attack all at our opponent, except maybe one token at Davriel. And then I'm gonna decline to draw with Sanctuary Warden. If they have something like Soul Shatter at instant speed, that could be pretty bad, but... We'll try this. Okay, opponent's gonna save Davriel. And take out our token, yep, Murderous Rider. Can still move the equipment, second main. Could also be worth it to just move it to the Sanctuary Warden. Sure. So now our opponent's taking a lethal on the board. And they might still have to keep up mana to answer Elishnorn, so they need a lot of instant speed interaction. Okay, Libation makes me sacrifice, can just get rid of a token luckily. Which they won't gain control of with Turgrid, since that doesn't quite work within the rules. Two mana left. And uh, yeah, I think playing Elishnorn is reasonable enough here. Even if there is some insta-speed removal, we should still be okay. And then I can animate Guardian Idol. And attack with the team. And then now probably fine to draw, unless we want to play around removal. If they kill Elishnorn, what happens? I think we're still in good shape. And our opponent takes this. Awesome. All right, so we got to see our Elish Norn token stack in action. There's certainly a few ways you can approach this Elish Norn brawl deck. You can play more sweepers to be better against creatures early, although for the most part I've been lacking the approach of making a bunch of tokens to then win the game very quickly once we do get our commander out. And it's also better against opposing control strategies so you're not stuck with a bunch of sweepers in hand. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Be on the lookout for the next Praetor as we continue with Praetor Week. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.